I've been doing these videos for years at this point, so I don't think they require too much introduction, but today we're going to be doing a long overview Hermes slash luxury Q&A, which if you've been with me for a while, you know the trail. These are the videos where I try to address all your MS questions, concerns, and dilemmas. As always, I ask you over on my Instagram to send me any questions or topics you'd like me to touch on, and you guys came through as always. We have quite a few questions on the RMS lawsuit, so that's definitely something that I would like to touch on in today's video. We have questions on the Kelly Pochette, how it compares to the Mini Kelly, where to start your RMS journey, what bags to buy on the pre-loved market, and which ones to get directly from the store, and so on. So we have a lot to discuss, and if you'd like to just have a good old luxury chat with your virtual friend who is as passionate about RMS as you are, then make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet, maybe go ahead, grab yourself a cup of coffee, a glass of wine, a cup of tea, whatever you prefer, because we are probably going to be here for a while, and keep on watching. If you'd like to participate in future Q&As like this, make sure you follow me on Instagram, and for those who took the time to send me questions, just know that I appreciate you, and without further ado, Let's go ahead and start picking some random questions. The first one, is it worth buying a Kelly 40 from Hermes or a second hand would be cheaper? Well, it really depends on where you're buying it and what you're buying, but more often than not, larger bags. So I would say Birkin 35s and above. So Birkin 35, Birkin 40 and Kelly 35 and above tend to be cheaper on the pre-loved market right now, purely because these bags are not the most popular, they are not as much in demand as smaller bags. And when it comes to the pre-loved market, prices are determined based on trends. They are not determined based on how much work goes into a single bag, whereas that's how Hermes creates their prices. If a bag is larger, there is more raw material and more work that goes into it, so it's going to be more expensive. But on the pre-loved market, because of the current trends, it tends to be the exact opposite. The smaller the bag, the more expensive it's going to be because of how much demand there is out there. So buying a larger Birkin or a Kelly on the pre-loved market could be a great choice, not only because you can save quite a bit of money, but also because if you want to get a smaller bag simultaneously, you can get a smaller bag directly from the store because obviously when it comes to RMS, you are limited by how many bags you can get each year. So you can get two quota bags within one year. That doesn't mean that you're guaranteed to get two bags within one year, but that's kind of your allowance. If you are offered two bags, if you like the way they look, you can buy two directly from the store, whereas you can buy as many bags as you want on the pre-loved market. So if you're after a larger bag, you can get it in the pre-loved market because you can save quite a bit of money and you're also not wasting one of your quota bags that you could get from the store. So if you want multiple bags, getting a larger bag pre-loved can be a great idea. And I would encourage you to look at some bags that are perhaps not in the most amazing shape. And if you want to find out how you can give them a facelift and also save thousands of dollars in the process, make sure that you check out my recent video on the Hermes Spa experience. What are your thoughts about the Hermes HAC Addo in both sizes? PM and GM. So the Hermes HAC Addo is also known as the HAC Backpack. The HAC is the Birkin's ancestor, which is usually a piece that you'll find in their men's collection. It's a piece that walks the Hermes runway almost every single season. And there have been several different iterations of the HAC. One of the newest ones was the HAC Backpack, which is a bag that I was offered a couple of years ago. I decided to turn it down because as much as I love the idea of an HAC backpack, I did not like the fact that it came with a single strap. So you cannot actually carry it as a normal backpack. Instead, you can only carry it sort of crossbody or just sort of hung on your shoulder, which I really did not like. I felt that it looked really awkward and I wasn't a big fan. It comes in two different sizes. PM is a little bit more common than GM. GM is slightly bigger. 
I like the idea, I like the shape, but I do not like the fact that it only comes with a single white canvas strap. So personally, it's going to be a no. And I do not like the Kelly Ado or the Kelly backpack either because the Kelly backpack was actually quite petite on me, but I do think it would work for quite a few people out there, people who are more petite, but I could not get on with either MS backpack. If you're looking for a backpack from Hermes, I actually really like the city backpack, which is one of the most comfortable Hermes bags I have ever worn. It makes you feel like a little turtle. So it's a completely different game. You know, it has a completely different aesthetic to it. It feels a lot more streamlined, a lot more understated and perhaps a little bit more corporate, but it feels incredibly comfortable. It's beautifully made and you can find it at amazing prices on the pre-loved market because it's so understated. Not many people would want to invest a lot of money into it, but I think that would be a much better choice than the HAC GM. What is the so-called pre-spend for a Mini Kelly? Is it more than one to one? I it might not be the answer that you're looking for, but personally, I do not believe in this one-to-one -one spending. I can tell you from my personal experience that there have been times when I spent a lot more than one-to-one -to, -one to get a bag and other times when I spent a lot less and I got a really exclusive, really hard to get rare piece. So for me, it I really don't think it matters. What really matters is that you buy pieces that you genuinely enjoy and you explore as much of the brand as you are interested in. I would really not force yourself into buying things that you don't want just to hit this sort of quota or just to spend a certain amount of money. I can tell you one thing, Mini Kelly's, Bochette's, cuts have become insanely, insanely difficult to get. So if you're new to Hermes, it is probably going to take you quite a bit of time, but don't overthink how much you're spending at the brand if you are not finding things that you're genuinely interested in. I know that some people take it really seriously and they will make sure to like spend the exact same amount of money as how much the bag would cost. But at the end of the day, I can tell you that spending an extra thousand, five hundred to three thousand dollars is not going to make that much of a difference unless you're clearing shelves. That's not what matters. Express your interest. Make sure that you get to know as much of the brand as you possibly can and build a relationship with your advisor. I think that matters a lot more than how much you spend and constantly trying to chase this number in your head, which I know it is not going to be the most popular answer, but that's genuinely what I believe in. But mini Kellys and small bags are going to be a really, really tough find. Does placing a special order often count as a quota bag for the cycle? So as we mentioned at the beginning of the video, you can buy two quota bags within one year. In the past, you could get around this rule by placing a special order, which could have been your third bag. These days, because Hermes has become so popular, most boutiques will not actually let you place a wish for a quota bag if you have placed a special order request. So this is something that I don't think I mentioned in my video explaining my special order experience last year, which long story short, if you have not seen that video, I decided not to ask for a special order back last year during my special order appointment because they did not have lizard on the menu, which is what I would have been interested in or alternatively alligator, but alligator, I could not choose either. So I decided not to order a bag just for the sake of it, number one, because it's way too much money to spend on a bag that I don't really want to have in my collection. And reason number two is that my boutique currently, if you place a special order, you're not actually allowed to put in a wish for any other bag. So what I asked instead is to put in a wish for a bag in a special finish, which if you have seen my last unboxing, you know exactly what bag I ended up with, but yes, Currently, as far as I understand, most boutiques will not let you buy a quota bag or put in a wish for a quota bag if you have recently placed a special order. You have to wait until the special order arrives and after that, you can ask for another quota bag. So do keep in mind that if you're ordering a special order bag, you might not be able to get another bag until your a la carte piece actually arrives. Summer holiday plans. Great question. To be honest, I don't have too much planned. As I mentioned in my last vlog, I'm going to Italy at the end of April for a friend's birthday, which I'm really excited for. We're going to Puglia in Italy. 
I've never been there. I have not done any research on what's there. So I'm really excited to explore a little bit of, I think it's South Italy. So I'm really excited to be there. I do want to go to Stockholm probably for my birthday. So in August, I went to Copenhagen for the first time last year and I fell in love with the Nordics. I just had the most incredible time. So this year I would love to go to Stockholm and I have never actually done a solo trip. So I'm thinking about doing it on my own. Is the Birkin way heavier than the Kelly of a similar proportion? Yes, in my experience, it is a lot heavier. Of course, it also depends on the leather because I understand what you mean by proportion. You mean if you compare a Kelly 35 to a Birkin 35, a Birkin 35 is going to be heavier unless it's made of a different leather because for example, Togo bags are a lot heavier than if a bag is made of Swift, let's say. So yes, Birkins are a lot heavier and they are a completely different user experience. But if you'd like to hear my in-depth thoughts and review on the Kelly bag. I recently did a video on my oldest Kelly, which I think is just about seven years old. So if you'd like to hear everything that there is to know about the Kelly bag and see how it genuinely ages and if it really holds up as well as people claim Hermes bags do, then I'll make sure to have that video linked up here for you. And without further ado, let's move on to your questions on the Birkin lawsuit. So we have some questions here that ask, what do you think about the Birkin case? Will customers or Hermes win? Birkin lawsuit in California, need your thoughts as soon as possible. What do you think about the lawsuit? Can you discuss the Hermes lawsuit? So we have a ton of questions on this in case you were not aware, which I doubt if you're here watching this video because I feel like it has been all over the luxury news, but a group of customers filed, I think it was a federal class action lawsuit in California a couple of weeks ago where they claimed and they sued RMS for pressuring them into buying things that they didn't really want in order to get the bag that they really wanted, which I believe is against antitrust laws in the US, which to me, the most surprising thing about this when this first came out was the fact that this is the first time it's ever happened just because I feel like there must be so many lawyers who shop at Hermes who were disappointed or who were upset by Hermes's business practices or people whose partners are lawyers, maybe someone who shops at Hermes whose wife or husband is a lawyer or a judge or whatever it is. But this to me was really quite shocking that this was the first time it's ever happened because it's so easy to sue people in the US. And by the way, just keep in mind that I'm not a lawyer. I took a single business law class when I was in college, but I am not a lawyer. So whatever I say is just my uneducated guesses and thoughts. So please take whatever I say with a grain of salt. But when it comes to this particular lawsuit, long story short, Hermes is being sued for their antitrust business practices, meaning that they are pressuring people into or allegedly pressuring people into buying things in order to get a bag, which I feel like it's going to be quite hard for the plaintiffs to prove that they were actually coerced into buying things because as you have most likely noticed, Hermes is quite careful with their wording. They'll never tell you that if you buy this, you'll get this. They'll just say, you know, if you want to get a bag, you need to have a rapport with the brand. You need to make sure that you understand the brand and you've explored as much of it as you possibly can, which is what I believe in as well. But I would assume, and if you're a lawyer, please feel free to correct me and let us know your professional thoughts in the comment section. But I would assume, I think to me, it's just common sense that these people who are suing Hermes will have to prove that there was not only correlation between A and B, but there was also causation. So they have to prove that they were specifically told that if they buy this and that, they'll be offered a Birkin or a Kelly at the end of the day, which I feel like would be quite difficult to prove. But this is just my opinion. I'm really curious to see how, you know, what the verdict is going to be at the end of the day, because if these people win, I think Hermes will have to really, really strongly reconsider their system of you know, offering bags because at the end of the day, they can get into a lot of trouble with that. I think in Europe, the system is a lot different. It really doesn't matter what you buy. It's more about your relationship with the brand, which you do need to buy things in order to establish that. But I feel like, 
you know, for example, when it came to me getting my Birkin rock, I barely, I don't think I really bought that many things between my last bag offer and my Birkin rock. A lot of people assume that I must have bought a ton of things to be offered such a rare and unique piece, but to be honest with you, I really didn't. Of course, I continued shopping at Hermes. I bought things, things that I liked, but I really did not make a huge purchase in order to get that back offered. So I think in Europe, it's much more about your relationship rather than how much you buy and you need to buy things in order to get a bag. In fact, my advisor told me that they literally tell people that you can buy whatever you want. It doesn't mean that it will accelerate your process of getting a bag. So I'm really curious to see what happens. I, I really don't think that the plaintiffs are going to win and I don't wish and I'm not wishing that for them, but I just think it would be very, very difficult for them to prove that. And I can share with you my experience, my similar experience. I don't think I have ever talked about this, but this is the reason I stopped shopping at the medicine store in New York. I never wanted to talk about it at the beginning of my channel because I never wanted it to seem like I'm complaining or that this is the biggest issue in my life because it really wasn't. But I can tell you why I stopped shopping at the medicine store. This was years ago. So in case you were not aware, I first started shopping at RMS consistently in New York and my home store was the medicine store. When I first started shopping there, they still had two boutiques, the men's store and the women's right across from it. And this was, I think, a about two years into my Hermes journey, I was a regular customer. I had spent quite a bit of money at Hermes. I had been offered several bags and I think I had at that point bought maybe three or four quota bags. And this I think was in 2017. So the Mini Kelly had been out for a couple of years and it was getting more and more popular. So I had a sales associate both at the men's and at the women's store. And that is purely because my advisor at the men's store could not be bothered to come over to the women's section and it wasn't because she was trying to be rude but what I loved about her is that she was so easygoing and she is one of the very reasons I am here today because I learned so much from her so it wasn't like that she could not be bothered to come over with me because she didn't want to waste her time it was more like you know I just like my job here I don't want to overwork myself so if you want to get something from the women's department start shopping with someone else, which I did. So I had someone else to look after me there. And whenever I bought something more unique or more interesting, she always came over with me for a chat, but she wasn't someone who would accompany me to the women's store regularly. Anyway, the reason I'm saying this is just so you understand sort of the dynamics. So I shopped both at the men's store and the women's store. I had been offered and I had bought bags from both departments. And when I was looking for a mini Kelly back in 2017, in exotic letters specifically, I first went to the men's store and I asked for it where my advisor told me that they really don't get smaller bags. So what she would suggest that I do is that I go to the women's store and I talked to, I almost said the person's name. And then I talked to my other advisor and ask her for that because the women's store will get smaller bags. So that's what I did. I stopped by. I can't remember what I was buying. I think I was buying like a CDC or a Be Happy or something along those lines. And I did express my interest for a mini Kelly. Do keep in mind that I had been buying Hermes for a little while. And she said, you know, I could get you a mini Kelly in regular leather, but if you're looking for a mini Kelly in exotic leather, that can be quite tough because those bags tend to go to people who are more experienced with Hermes, mainly people who have been buying furniture and more homeware. So I thought to myself, you know, there are a couple of pieces of furniture that I had been looking at and I didn't buy it on the spot, but I spent the next couple of weeks thinking about it. Long story short, I went back a couple of weeks later and I ended up buying with my ex actually a Metier chair, which if you saw, I think it was one of my last videos that I filmed in New York. I bought with my ex this beautiful chair for the apartment. We did ask my advisor to look into it for me because I wasn't going to buy something that had to be custom made. They happened to have one in the warehouse in New Jersey, so it could be delivered within three weeks. What really shocked me about this experience is how much shipping I had to pay for it. I don't know if this is the norm for designer furniture, but we were told that we had to pay 
a certain percentage of the piece of furniture that we were ordering for shipping, which I think was like three or four percent, which to me was shock shocking. I would think that if you're buying a chair that at the time was like six thousand dollars, they would deliver it to your house for free, but they didn't, so we had to pay that additional shipping. Anyway, the chair got delivered within a couple of weeks. I was really happy with it, and that was really it. I never heard from her. So I bought that chair and I think I bought a nightstand from the equestrian line, both pieces I had been looking at. I wasn't just buying them for the sake of it, but I probably would have not bought them quite as quickly if it wasn't for her implying that I could potentially get an exotic mini Kelly if I bought more homeware. Anyway, a few weeks go by, I don't hear from her, nothing really happens. So next time I'm at Hermes, I can't remember what I was buying, but as I was checking out, I asked her if we could put in a wish for a mini Kelly in exotic leather, in alligator specifically, or I think this was also around the time when the special order experience was taking place. So I also said, you know, if you think it would be difficult to get a mini Kelly off the shelf, I wouldn't mind putting in a special order for a mini Kelly in alligator because I understand it's going to take longer, but at least it's almost guaranteed that I'll be getting one. And she said, I can't remember her exact words, but she said something along the lines of, yeah, getting a mini Kelly is not going to be an issue if you want to get a special order. Give me a couple of days. I'll talk to my manager who I knew who was the store director and the director of the leather department. I can ask her for her approval, but I don't see it being an issue. But what I noticed that she kept avoiding the word exotic and alligator. So I specifically asked, I was like, great, thank you so much, but please ask if I could get a mini Kelly in alligator, whether that's through the special order experience or not, that to me really doesn't matter. And that's when she said, I think she said, she never said that, oh, you have to buy this or you have to buy that. But what she said is that if you would like to get a special order in exotic leather, you know, that is tough. That really only goes to people who have multiple homes, all of which are furnished by Hermes. And I was like a deer in headlight. I was like, wait, what's just happened? We had a conversation a few weeks ago. You implied, you never said, she never said that if you buy this, you'll get this. But she implied that in order for me to get this bag, I should start looking at furniture and start buying furniture, which I did. And then when I actually got the pieces of furniture, the whole story changed and I said to her, you know, it doesn't have to be a special order. I am more than happy because I was looking for a bag in black. It's not like I wanted it in a special color with a special lining or with special hardware. I just wanted where I was looking for. I would have loved to get a mini Kelly in black matte alligator. And um, she said, you know, if that's what you want, that's going to be hard because that goes to people who have multiple homes with multiple pieces of Hermes furniture. So I just thought to myself, okay, do I need to go ahead buy an apartment in New York or multiple apartments in New York and have everything furnished by Hermes just so you can help me get a special order or a regular bag. To me, that just really did not make sense. And I, long story short, stopped shopping at that store, which really pained me because I loved my advisor that I was shopping with at the men's store. But when I moved to another store and I started shopping there, they had both a men's and a women's department. And it would have been really tough for me to shop at both stores, especially because I was trying to establish myself as a new client at that store. And I didn't want to spread myself too thin. So, you know, I just decided to move on. And when I wasn't happy with what happened, I just moved to another store. But that's basically my experience being, you know, kind of pushed into the direction of buying something. I want to be really careful with my words because I want to make it really clear. I was never forced into buying anything. I was never told to buy this or that so I can get, you know, a bag that I actually want. I did not buy something that I wouldn't have bought otherwise, but I probably wouldn't have bought it right then and there, I probably would have waited a little bit longer, but that's my experience. And if you're a lawyer, please do share your professional thoughts with us. I'm really curious to see what's going to happen, but I think it would be really tough for the plaintiffs to prove that they were actually coerced into buying things that they wouldn't have done otherwise. What do you think of shopping at two different Hermes stores in the same city? This for me would be a major no. It's not something that I would advise you to do unless you're...